Hey guys, in this video we'll be going over the subroutine, so stick around for that one. So, what is a subroutine? Subroutine. Well, so, so one more subroutine. Well, it's pretty much like a jump. You're gonna set a subroutine to gonna direct it to another part of your code and uh, you can also call it a procedure procedure and you can technically also call it a function if you come from a higher programming language and that's pretty much what happens when you use a higher programming language when you create a function you are creating a subroutine or a procedure the only difference is that a function actually returns a value in a procedure or a subroutine uh, doesn't. Well, generally speaking, you can, you know, if you have a type void, it doesn't return a value per se. It does return a type void, but it doesn't return anything. But regardless, it's just a way to jump into your code as well. And that's why one of the inverse instructions that we're going to go over is the jump to subroutine and then return from subroutine return from subroutine so let me jump and sub routine and is there a mnemonic of the key return from let me copy and paste to be faster there you go. So, so this is our subroutine. We're gonna jump to a different part of the code. Uh, but however, what happens when you use a subroutine? We're gonna use the stack. So let me bring up the stack from your last video, or maybe your location at least. From 100 from FF. Let's monitor. And let's jump. So let's uh, create a small code over here first. So let's uh, so let's create some labels. That's how you create subroutines. So let's create a init label over here. Say run label. And I'll have a stop label. Uh, just remember that a assembler is a procedural language. So you're gonna go step by step. So let me show you why I have this stop. So of course I'm gonna jump for any. And what are we doing in it is pretty much you're gonna load some values over here. Let's load one and y. Let's load one, two, and three. So so for whatever reason you wanna load our registers for those values. So we're gonna jump over here. So that's our jump to some routine. And then I don't forget to return from subroutine. So we're returning. So you know where to return. Otherwise, our code is not going to work. Uh, then we're going to run. So I'm not going to do Let's add one increment x, increment y, something like this. And return from subroutine. And, uh, and here we're gonna break. So let's assemble. Let's see if I did anything. Everything went right. Oh, everything's going perfectly right. Now let's do let's step by step. Oh, well, we forgot to use the so jump to the other subroutine. So let's say run and jump to stop. So let's assemble one more time. Well, it's happy and then let's go step by step so let's step first so you see it already jump for our PC counter already jump and our stack pointer got decreased and if you scroll all the way down over here let's go to 1ff here you go Remember, it's in reverse by order, so here's the address, or returning address. So what the subroutine is doing is actually storing 
our he has our return address right over here so it's right over here so if I step one more time see you're initiating our init value over here then you're gonna jump and look at the these two values over here the stack pointer and the PC counter so it popped back up we first we push and I pop that back pop back up I'm sorry and then it's gonna jump to the run command over here so so go to run you're gonna add one gonna increment X increment Y gonna return for subroutine I was gonna go to this subroutine stop and then they're gonna break so we first you run that's what we have over here and uh, that's what pretty much a subroutine is uh, uh, let me show you something uh, it's a good practice to put this on the top of the program but remember it is a procedural language so if I so if I did something like this let me remove the stop just to show you guys let me assemble Oh, something is not happening. Increment X. Let's do something like this. Let's assemble. And let's uh just let's run just to show you guys. Remember the last values we had over here was two, three, and four. Let's run. And that's and if you notice over here we're back to one, two, and three. So let's reset and step by it. So you guys notice. So here it is. <clears throat> we went to the run, incremented. Then, as you see over here, it's now we went all the way back to. Since we came back to run, it's now it's going to this part of the code. So one, two, three, and then that's where we are at over here so just be careful that's why we had a break over here so so we could that's why I added a the break over here so you stop our code from going all the way down so that's pretty much a subroutine and with that we just cover all of the major it's pretty much all of the 6502 uh, in the next video I'm either gonna go over the undecided yet but I'm probably gonna go over the Desmond uh, directives or, or the opcodes as well or the pseudo opcodes op -codes, or I'm going over a small uh, 6502 program to go over with but that's gonna be it for this video uh, we just concluded 6502 so see you guys on the next video thank you